Hi everybody, my name is Jo and I love to read. Welcome to my November and December wrap up and Happy New Year everybody! This is going to be probably the first video of the year that you're going to see. I ended up catching up on A Song of Ice and Fire. I read these last two books or technically the one book It's All a Dance with Dragon. It did take me a long time so we started out with part one Dreams and Dust and I finished up with part two After the Feast. I did read these in parts and I also had breaks in between these as well even though they're parts. As usual I liked the second half of one of these books like this A Song of Ice and Fire series I tend to enjoy the second part more. It's generally what has more of the harder hitting things which is the same with most of the chapter styles as well that George R. R. Martin does is that he the start of the chapter is a bit slower and then the second half in the end is where it really like kicks up with the action and then the chapter ends of course. I've gotten really used to Martin's writing style and when I actually started picking up another fantasy series I was actually quite disappointed that it wasn't just one character's perspective in a chapter and then you know that you go to the next one. That has been something that I didn't think I enjoyed to begin with but now that I've gotten used to it and read it a lot I really like that style. So can you guys let me know whether A Wheel of Time is like that as well? I'm trying to decide whether I want to read A Wheel of Time next or Malazan next because I want to have one super epic fantasy series on the go. I'm still reading other fantasy things as well but some things are not quite as like epic or difficult to read as Martin and so I really wanted to catch up on this first before I then went on to something else. There is not a lot that I can say spoiler free about this series. I would just say or about reading these volumes. I would just say that there are some characters as usual who I'm really enjoying and I really want to see what happens with their stories and some characters who feel really mirandering and I started off loving it the start of this series and then went down. So I'm going to stop talking about these now because I think that I floundered and good luck editing Joe trying to talk about these books but the main thing that's been in my head is I enjoyed reading them and I'm so excited to google everything like I've been googling and reading stuff and it, but the main thing that I have been thinking about is that I've caught up and I'm so excited to have caught up so I'm sorry that this is a really terrible like wrap up for these but I will be doing videos so I'm going to be doing a series ranking for these. I know that other books are going to come out. I'm still an optimist in that regard that I think the other books are going to come out. At least two more we think that he's going to be writing one day. I think that it's going to be way too long for me to actually remember the whole series and do a series ranking when he's eventually done so I'm going to do, do one now and update it. I also kind of want to talk about the characters which may end up being combined with the series rankings because I read this for the characters not the plot. I started Sailor Moon Volume 1 by Naoko Takeuchi and I am disappointed to say that I've stopped reading it part way through. I don't know if I would enjoy this more having not watch the TV show. When I stopped reading this I was just like I'm bored. I'm so disappointed because I really wanted to love this and I'm just so bored. And I, <laughs> I think this is a case of as I've thought about it a bit more though and given it a bit more of a break I think I'm going to shove it back on my TBR somewhere and pick it up again when I'm kind of in the mood again and see if I can kind of push through. Even though I don't like saying push through and I don't like pushing through because it's going to get better because I think well something should be grabbing me from the onset but I'm also thinking about the fact that I do know this series pretty well and I do know the opening, like not the book series but I know the TV show, the Americanized one. I watched the first seasons of the American TV show a lot. So I am probably pretty bored of the whole introducing the first few members of the Sailor Squad. Once we start to introduce the later members, like I didn't know that there was that many people. I have put this down and instead of actually wanting to completely get rid of it and give up on the series altogether, I'm going to put it back on my TBR. Wait, I've even felt a bit more I was gonna try and like finish it on like the last day of the new year and probably pre-baby I would have <laughs> if you know all the spare time in the world to get this finished and then decide do I want to continue on. I still think that it takes me about three volumes to become interested in something that's illustrated. Hopefully now giving it a bit more space and a break I'll be able to at least finish this volume and be able to have a bit more of an idea of whether I'm going to waste my money or not. So that was disappointing but not unexpected either because I've always, I've never finished the Sailor Moon TV show because I've always struggled to get through it and I was hoping that the manga might have a bit more to it that would help me like really appreciate it but we'll see. So the jury is still out on this one. I'm going to put it in the in my TBR again and pick it up at some stage when I just need something quick to continue on 
and we'll go from there. The next comic I finished was Saga Volume 6 by Fiona Staples and Brian K. Vaughan. Another great volume. I just realized it's probably better that I'm holding them over here to be like a bit more balanced. But anyway, this was another really great volume. I love these people together. I love Alana and Marco. I think it's Marco. I was going to say Mako, but I'm pretty sure it's Marco. There is the usual trademark stuff in Saga that there is always something that is explicit that you're not expecting that's a bit random. Then luckily there's also some lovely romance scenes and lovely smut scene between my two favourite people. I don't know if they're my favourite people, but they're up there and one of my favourite couples ever that I've read about. And they're so human and real, we know that. And I just, I love this one so much. It's always unexpected and I just, I love them so much. I'm so glad I started this series. The next book I tried to read was The Lost Symbol by Dan Brown. Now, unfortunately, as you heard me say, I tried and I'm not going to read it much further. I barely got through much at all. I probably got, yeah, I got like to page 20 and just went, mm -mm, no way, I cannot do this with a book this big. A part of me thinks, so Dan Brown novels, they're, they're kind of, they're thrillers-ish. There's always some kind of ancient society or some kind of secret and the main character, there's a mission to solve. They're supposed to be happening over like a very short period of time, these books. I read Angels and Demons, oh man, like five, ten years ago, something like that. And I, it was through my phase where I wasn't doing booktube and I also hardly ever DNF anything and so I made myself read like 50 pages a day or something like that to get through it. I don't remember hating it but I didn't really love it and but I'd always sort of felt was I too young to be reading a Dan Brown then? So when we went to our local book fair this year I saw this really nice copy of The Lost Symbol and The Lost Symbol as the title really interested me so I picked it up and I was in the mood when I picked this one up after purchasing it like months later, picked it up in December and it's just too slow paced for me which is a really weird thing to say about a thriller and that's when I kind of think maybe I should have got to the part where the proper mystery is pushed forward and then maybe it would spring up but how long conversations take in this book is ridiculous like I don't know whether it's because it's an older book maybe or maybe because the author's so popular that he can do sort of whatever he wants like this was done in 2009 so it is like it's getting older but it's still in the 2000s but it just it felt so slow and mirandering like they talk about things that don't matter and it's really interesting myself being a writer how they sort of say start in the action like don't spend all this time like you know, oh, there's a phone call, or pick up the phone, or this is someone's um, office, I'm the secretary, can I please speak to such and such, and then transfer it across to the main character, I'm the secretary, can you talk to my boss, oh yeah, that's fine, transfer, oh hi guy, how's it going, oh I'm good, you know, I did this and that, and, th and then you also got the guy's morning before as well, and it just, ah, uh, I didn't, it was so slow, it's like, it just started on the phone call when he's telling you about this mystery, he, all this, it's not even the mystery, he's inviting you to this gala, like I, uh, it was, it was just so tedious and like stuff that didn't need to happen and I'm like, look at how big this book is, oh my god. I'm pretty safe to say that I'm giving up on Dan Brown as an author, which I'm a little bit sad about because I, I felt like these were going to be a good palate cleanser, like something fast and action-y, but this kind of, I don't want to say this kind of thriller though because I'm, I, I'm interested in the whole like, there are mysteries hidden amongst like our normal society and I really like that Dan Brown takes like historical uh, locations and, and mysterious things in our actual world and builds a story beyond it. So if anybody's got any recommendations for another author that does that, I would love to try them. But I just don't think that Dan Brown is going to gel with me sadly. So this one is going to be unhauled. I'm glad I tried it because it was so big and I'm glad to get it off my shelf. But yeah, so it's just a little bit disappointing and sad. Then I read volume four of Sonic the Hedgehog by ooh, oh, um, Flynn, Thomas, Yardley, Skelly and Lawrence. So I'm trying to get a lot better with saying names for comics because I think it's worthwhile. It's harder to remember because there's lots of names, but I also do remember the names like I do the titles. Like books is generally only one name mentioned, but anyways. So this was another really great edition. It's called Infection. I can tell you very briefly what it's about. That's not going to be spoilers because these are very episodic still at this stage. So this volume, Eggman has got another plan to take over the world. I think he's, is he called Eggman, Dr. Robotnik? I think it, like, I, I know he's called both in different renditions. I think in this one it's Eggman and I always call him Eggman because I find it easier. So Eggman has 
invented this virus which if it touches people or, or touches animals because it's all about animals it turns them into robots and the really scary thing though is that depending on how quick or fast or how much you're exposed to it it can be really slow and so you're watching like this silver like shit overtake you and then eventually you become a robot which that kind of like Body transformation to me is one of my like ugh, top horrid things that I would not want to happen to me. I like reading about it and watching it because I find it fascinating, but I would never do it to myself. So this was really interesting. I had a really good time with this again. We got more page time with Amy Rose, which was really good. And I was gratified again to see that her depiction in the comics is a lot stronger than what she is in the TV shows. She is a really cool female character who's in charge of the rebels and is so busy all the time, but has a little bit of time to go with so and he wants her to come with him so I find that really interesting. There's been a lot of laugh out loud moments in this book too. I was very surprised at that where the humour is actually quite good. So I'm enjoying this read through. Daniel read this one first. These were actually his Christmas present. The final book that I'll talk about briefly if I can leave my farm where I put it. There it is. Shiver Magic. No I'm not finished yet. <laughs> I, I have read further through it though. I'm I don't know is that like halfway nearly because I broke the spine possibly nearly halfway I think yeah I'm still enjoying it I wanted to I picked it up organically so I was I was looking forward to picking it up I have put it down again because I was getting bored again so I think we're just going to do this. And again, this was the book that I was referencing when I was talking about getting used to George R. R. Martin's reading style, uh, writing style, is that I wish that Ship of Magic was similar where it would focus on one character for a chapter and then go to the next one. I'm finding the chapters a bit long because we're going through lots of different people's POVs and some that I was sick of and wish we would go to someone else's, we haven't. So... Yeah, that's what's kind of draining my enjoyment. I'm finding that what kind of won me over to continuing to read this book is that Robin Hobb will, the characters and their thoughts that interest me. So when she was going into a lot of thoughts of um, uh, the evil guy, like the antagonist, his wife, who was also the sister of the protagonist, going into her thoughts was really fascinating. And I really enjoyed as we were sitting there with her day-to-day -day life and she's learning that her husband isn't really a great guy and and all of her development with that and her son as well, Wintro. So I was really enjoying his thoughts as he's learning a bit. Althea, I'm still quite bored of. I hope we get some character development, which we are a little bit, but we're still bogged down a lot in plot stuff with her which is kind of boring so we go in and out and that's what I find with this series of Robin Hobbs or this book of Robin Hobbs I'm going in and out of my interest depending on whether we spend a lot of time in the character's thoughts or not which is a bit frustrating but I'm thinking that if I just take my time and I just put it down when I want and then pick it back up when I want then which of course everybody should do that with their reading but sometimes we put pressure on ourselves to DNF things or finish things so I'm just just gonna slowly slowly read it and then hopefully I'll be able to tell you guys in like June or something that I'm done and then I'll decide whether I want to continue on with the series. I'm really hoping that the next book in the trilogy will be better that once I'll have read the first book maybe things will have improved and I'll have cared about the characters and Althea will have developed enough that I'm actually invested in her but it so this has been a really interesting bumpy road but I haven't given up yet and I have made some progress so there we go. Thanks everybody so much for watching this wrap up. It's probably going to be a bit longer than I wanted it to, but hopefully I haven't rambled too much with it, which I don't think I have. How has your end of the year reading gone? How is your November and December? I hope you read some really good books. I can't wait to see all the videos that are coming out for all the end of the year stuff. And thank you guys so much for joining me for another year on the channel and welcome to any newbies, new subscribers, or just people watching my videos for the first time. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you guys soon. <laughs> Bye!